All right, CNT 120. We're now going to look more specifically at our data link layer addressing or our MAC address. So let's dig in with a little bit more details now. Uh, first thing, remember, this is the address that's burnt into my NIC, my network card, meaning it's hard-coded in. It's not something that uh, it's changed. It's pretty much hard-coded in. This is a 48-bit address, so again, if I wrote it out in binary, ones and zeros, it would be 48 bits long, but typically it's written as 6-hex numbers, or if you're counting digits, 12-hex digits, and this would be a typical MAC address right here, uh, number, colon, number, colon, so forth. Okay. Uh, nodes on a LAN, so nodes all connected to like the same switch, if you will, find each other by MAC address. Uh, if you remember, we talked a little bit about switches and how switches learn MAC addresses and try to get data to the correct port and only port, one port on the switch. Um, this is the address that the switches are using to do that. So if I have two computers connected to the same switch, they should be able to find each other directly by MAC address. And remember, we mentioned this earlier, these are also multiple names down here for MAC address. Physical address because it's burn in, adapter address because it's located on your network adapter, layer 2 address because that's where it is in the OSI model. Again, data link layer, that's where it is in the OSI model. And last but not least, most networks on the planet are running Ethernet, so most of us are using Ethernet NICs. So a lot of times this also gets called the Ethernet address, because uh, that's the address used on Ethernet networks to find computers. Okay, that's where you, uh, you, you a lot of times you hear that name. Uh, again, this is burned in on a NIC. Here's a wireless card that actually has the MAC address printed on it. Just to give you an idea, I think that was the picture that was in the book. Um, I mentioned this here. These are also multiple names for it. 48 bits long. Um, written here's another example as well. Just this is kind of what I have written on the first slide in a different format for you. So either one of these hopefully will uh, click for you. Traditionally, a MAC address contains two parts. The first 24 bits are known as the OUI, Organizational Unique Identifier, or Block ID, uh, identifying the company that made it. This is assigned by IEEE. So the first half of a MAC address would identify the manufacturer. Meanwhile, the last 24 bits is a uniquely assigned ID for a node, for a NIC, if you will. So with that said, I should be able to, if I have a MAC address, look it up to see who made this. Um, sometimes that's handy if you're trying to deal with network card issues or who is who made this network card I'm trying to find a driver for, etc. So it can be kind of handy, and I actually have a link to this tool. I'll show you the details of this in just a minute, uh, that we can actually look up a MAC address and who manufactured it. Um, here's another you know, kind of example of a MAC address. I think I pulled this off one of the nodes I was using at one point in time. 48-bit um, number, but traditionally 12 hex digits. Reminder, don't forget the other podcasts I have on binary and hexadecimal. Please use those. You need to know the basics of binary and hexadecimal when working with addresses. Um, it, it, it's going to become very valuable, very handy to you. So please use those other podcasts that review uh, binary conversions and hexadecimal conversions. This MAC address is used to identify a specific node on a network, on a LAN. Um, and again, my PC as opposed to your PC, my network card as opposed to your network card. And switches read these MAC addresses, make a table of them. That way, as data comes into the switch, it can try to find only that MAC address and send it out only that single port instead of sending it out all ports on the switch. That makes for a more efficient network. That's how switches operate. Typical switches operate. Now, as we start talking MAC addresses and IP addresses, we often start getting confused as to why there's two types of addresses. Well, don't let that, you know, kind of worry you. Think big picture now. If I have IP addresses and MAC addresses, which I do, I use both, and both kind of get branded on top of a piece of data moving through a network, what happens is the IP address, which we're going to talk details in a little bit, uh, but the IP addresses are used by devices like routers to get that chunk of data to the correct network. Example, if I'm mailing a letter, it's to get the letter to the correct city, correct street, and then the correct house. So that address, you know, 123 Main Street Mechanics per PA, will get to my house as opposed to 
another house on 123 Main Street that might be in, in Lima, Ohio. So the address is there to get it to the correct house, just like the IP address. The IP address is to get it to the correct network. And my example would be the York campus of Hack as opposed to the Gettysburg campus of Hack. So if I send something and use the IP, it'll know to get it to the correct network, you know, Hack York as opposed to Hack Gettysburg. Once it gets in the door, once it gets in my house, once it gets to the York campus, now the MAC address gets used to get it to the correct node. Okay, the MAC address now gets used to get it to the correct computer in that LAN, in that network. So the correct computer at the York campus, the MAC address is getting used to get it to that PC. In my letter example, if I'm mailing a letter, once it gets in the house, then the name on the house gets read to get it to me as opposed to my wife or me as opposed to my daughter. So now the name up top is used to get it to the correct person in the house. Well, my MAC address now is used to get it to the correct PC at the York campus. So the IP address is getting it to the correct network, your campus of hack, and then once it gets in the door and hits the switch, then the switch is using the MAC address to get to the correct PC at your campus. So both of these are needed, both of these get used. And I throw this picture in here as an example, if I were mailing something, a chunk of data, once it gets up to the routers, the routers keep using the IP address to get it to the right network. Once it gets in the network, the IP address is done, it's like, hey, my job is done. The switch now uses the MAC address to get it to the correct node in that, in that network, in that campus, if you will. That's what happens. And again, here's another uh, sample of a MAC address. I think this is another picture that's used in the book a lot of times. Um, and then here more specifically is if I start looking for my MAC address on my computer, here is actually um, on my uh, MacBook. Actually, this is my MacBook. I do an IP, IF command, IF config command. I use that command and I can generate or see the MAC address. Right here is the MAC address from a particular MacBook I was using. On my Windows PC, I would use the IP config command slash all, IP config slash all command, and I can actually see the physical address here, my MAC address, my physical address. And that's where it's handy to know those multiple names. Okay. So let's pause for a second. I'm going to pull up the command prompt on my Windows computer here. I'm sitting on my Windows computer, so I'm going to pull up my command prompt. I'm going to do the IP, ooh, if I can type, there we go, IP config space slash all. When I do that, I'll need to scroll through all my network connections, and I'm going to look for the one I'm currently using, which is my Ethernet 3 connection right here. As I, let me scroll that up. One of the first things I notice is this tells you who made it. This is an Intel blah, 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 Nick. And then here is my physical address here. This is my MAC address on this Windows PC. 1866DA blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, I'm going to pause there for a second. I'm going to pull up my Linux virtual machine. Let me log back into this guy. I think he started to go to sleep on me. Once I'm back into my Linux machine, I will pull up my command prompt here. And I'm going to use the IF config command. This works on both... Uh, Mac and Linux, IF config. Here is my Ethernet adapter. Here's my IP address. I keep going. I go a little bit further, and in here I'm going to see my Ethernet address. Remember, I said there's multiple names. Ethernet address right here, 000C29, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, that that is the MAC address for my Linux machine. In this case, it is a virtual machine, so it's really the hypervisor that assigned this if you want to get technical. Uh, but there is the MAC address for my Linux machine. So there, real quickly, is MAC addresses and how to find them. Now, I'm going to do another little quick side trip. I loaded in my browser my uh, OUI lookup tool. So I'm going to try my Windows I MAC address right here. Let's do this guy. I'll do a uh, enter to copy that. I'm going to come over here to this tool and do a paste. And I'm going to hit search and go, okay, give me a find on this guy. And I'm going to find out that Dell manufactured this. 1866DA is a Dell. Um, yeah, this is in a Dell computer, so that's not too surprising. Uh, there is my Dell Nick, if you will. So sometimes that's handy to be able to look that up, be able to look that up to see who manufactured that. And that might help with finding drivers or fixing a driver issue that you might have on a particular node. 
So there super quickly is my MAC addresses and working with or looking up my MAC addresses on Windows and Linux using the IP config command, IP config all command on Windows or the IF config command on Linux or Mac. When I come back in the next one, we'll start talking the beginning of IP addresses.